I've built many different types and, and sizes of steamers for steam, steaming wood for bending over the years and uh, certainly um, my eight inch five foot long PVC pipes with three quarter inch wall thickness uh, so it's a very stiff rigid pipe uh, has been um, kind of my favorite steamer but I can uh, put in a half a dozen legs and and three sets of slats and all at one time in something that large uh, but this one is just so simple and easy to do uh, this is a this happens to be a 48 inch copper tray that John Wilson of the Shaker Oval Box fame uh, back in Michigan, he makes these. He also makes them in galvanized and they're half the price and you can just look him up on shakerovalboxes.com and uh, find uh, John Wilson and a wonderful man to uh, get shaker box making supplies from the copper tacks and these copper trays or the galvanized but uh, so I've got uh, two of these, this smaller one and this 48 inch one, uh, for doing shaker boxes. But I realized that I could take my chair legs and pre-shape them, get the tapers all done. And, um, and since this is very dry wood, I rehydrate it. I'll put it in some uh, four inch PVC pipes and uh, soak it in water for uh, anywhere from one to three months so that the water go, and particularly on this red oak, it just goes right up the grain um, and rehydrates very quickly. White oak is much more difficult because it's a waterproof wood. Uh, it, it has uh, tylosis in the cell structure of white oak that makes it waterproof. Therefore, it's good for whiskey barrels and wine flasks. And the red oak is good for flower barrels and nail kegs. It's also good for chair making. And uh, because it rehydrates easily, uh, I like using it because it doesn't take as long to get it ready. And I need the moisture on the interior of the wood so that when I put it in the boiling water, and in this case, it'll be boiling water, Boiling water and steam at atmospheric pressure with no, not an enclosed pressurized system, it's 212 degrees. And it doesn't matter whether it's boiling water or steam. And so by putting it in the boiling water an hour per inch of thickness, so this leg will be in here about an hour and a half in this boiling water once it comes to a boil, and that's when I start counting the time and uh, the lignin, lignin uh, is the resin that holds the fiber together in trees, uh, makes up about 35% of the tree. And that's what we're softening up when we've got it in this hot water. So we get that lignin nice and hot and soft through the interior, all the way through that wood. And then when we take it out of here, we can put it in this bending form and bend it down to this shape. This particular bending form allows me to have a pocket up here where I can bend a chair leg for uh, a, just a standard dining side chair. But by bringing it back to this point and bending it from here, I'm building this tall shop stool. And uh, it's exceptionally comfortable because the slats are very close together and uh, if you ever uh, want a really comfortable shop chair to sit in and rest your lower back, this is it. I use this chair every day. Uh, I get tired, bent over my bench, get a little bit of tension here, sit in that chair for five minutes, and it's just like the tension drains out. I'm ready to go back to work. So uh, this needs to be in here for about uh, 10 days, two weeks. That's doesn't really matter as long as it's about 10 days and it'll hold this curve or the curve up in all the way into this depending on which chair you're making 
And once it comes out of here, then um, uh, the shaping starts taking place with the draw knives and the spoke shaves shaping this. Once it's all shaped, then the mortises are chopped and the sockets are drilled and the chair then is uh, ready to start the assembly process uh, to make uh, that shop stool. And so that's uh, this for this particular chair and the U-bolts with a wedge is really a simple way. It doesn't tie up any of my shop clamps. I put that U-bolt and wedge right here at the very top and then start bending it down bring it down against the form, slip this U-bolt through a hole, drive a wedge in under here. And uh, by cutting the threads off of this side, even when I slide the U-bolt back out of the way, it stays right here in the form. And as I'm bending this down, all I have to do is flip it up, slide it in place, and I'm not fumbling around reaching and trying to find the U-bolt. The and then I have a whole bucket of wedges and I just drive a wedge in there. Really is a nice simple way of uh, bending chair legs. Now, that's with just a simple one, dire one direction bend. When it comes to chairs like this three slat side chair, the four slat arm chair is even a little bit taller and then the six slat rocking chair that I do, uh, all have these reversing curves. And I just love this uh, kind of a shape where you, you know, you strive to have these smooth, fair curves like the hull of a ship. You've got these curves going on, but you can't tell exactly where it changed direction and you can't feel it. It's called a smooth, fair curve. And that's when we talk about fairing in the hull of a ship, sailboat, that's exactly what it is. You're fairing it in so that it's uh, nice, smooth, graceful curves. And the bending form to create that top bend requires uh, a bit of a different type of a clamping process. And I use this uh, channel iron with a, again, uh, a trailer leaf spring U-bolt and a block of wood that matches the curve that I want the top of this leg to be. has a stainless steel strap here that keeps any uh, metal from touching that wood and, and spoiling the color. Plus, the stainless steel allows me to attach a handle here to give me leverage to make this bend and then start putting in bolts and driving in wedges as I'm making this bend. So again, it's uh, quite simple uh, and it doesn't tie up all of my shop clamps.